Hello Future Peas, this is Vasim Asghar. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the US and Canada. I've authored several books on the topic of FE electrical and computer exam preparation as well as a P-Power exam preparation. And I run popular FE electrical and P-Power exam prep programs. In this video, you're gonna see me answering question related to operational amplifier, which belongs to section nine of FE electrical and computer exam specification electronics. This question I received from one of my students during a live training session for FE electrical and computer exam preparation. One of the interesting things about electronics is that roughly 70% of electronics is based on circuit analysis. If you have a sound understanding of circuit analysis, then for the most part, electronics will be a breeze for you. The remaining 30% of electronics builds upon circuit analysis with some specialized knowledge pieces for specific electronic devices such as diodes, Zener diodes, PN junction diodes, operational amplifiers, transistors. Within transistors, we obviously have the BJTs, MOSFETs, JFATs, and so on. Within my FE electrical and computer exam preparation program, as you're going to see in this particular video, I routinely emphasize the importance of circuit analysis when it comes to electronics. And this is reinforced by means of detailed explanations within the lectures, practice problems in the quizzes, mini exams, and computer simulated practice exams. If you're new to this channel, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to stay up to date with content related to FE electrical and P power exam preparation. Let us now learn a little bit about operational amplifiers. Is this, this is problem number five from the homework assignment. And the student is saying that I have equation Homework assignment number five, something not make sense for me, okay? I don't paraphrase these questions, guys, and please don't mind. I hope that you just focus on the question and the messaging, not the grammar or the spellings or this or that. I'm trying to keep it real. And as the questions are appearing, I'm presenting it to them, and then I'm gonna paraphrase for you if there's something that doesn't add up, right? So. He's directly jumping onto this and we can go ahead and solve this. I don't mind going through the op -amp circuit analysis with you one more time. Um, he's like, okay, we arrived at minus 36 volts over here for the output voltage. Okay. So if we do a current uh, voltage divider, so he's doing a voltage divider and he's basically writing an KCL, something like a KCL, KVL, it's not 100% accurate regardless. So then he's calculating I naught and the question is asking about I naught, right? This, this current over here, I naught. And then he's like, uh, or should I follow your solution, right? So this is a disjointed question. And a lot of times, even the way that a student asks a question tells me a lot about their understanding. I'm not, I'm not here to judge your uh, you know, technical competency, but to help you get to a point where you can pass this exam comfortably. And you guys can see that the way that the question is worded, I mean, ignore the grammatical mistake or the wording or the, you know, um, spellings and whatnot punctuation, but the train of thought that the student has is clearly not streamlined, okay? Because he's jumping from one point to another point. So let's take a look at this question, okay? What is the question saying? This is homework problem number two that I have in the live training class. And it's saying that calculate the value of the output current I naught. I'm more than happy to solve it with you guys over here. You guys wanna go through this systematically and then address this, or you want me to just answer the question? Okay, let's go through it systematically. Now, what are the two things that I've explained to you guys when it comes to operational amplifier? Quickly. Two, three things. What are the major pieces of conceptual understanding you need to have in order to solve the op amp problems seamlessly? Exactly. The first piece is that for an ideal op amp, the voltage that is appearing at the positive terminal is always, always equal to the voltage that is appearing at the negative terminal. Does it make sense, guys? Okay. And there is zero current, there is zero current going into V plus, V minus. In other words, as Doug is saying, the input impedance is infinity. Okay, you're saying A is infinity, which is, which is basically the DC gain. Current can never enter 
into the terminals of the operational amplifiers, input terminals, positive and minus. Now, if you understand this and combine it with KCL, there's nothing to worry about as far as the op amp circuits are concerned, okay? In the course, we have done two-stage operational amplifiers. In fact, I think there's one homework assignment, if I'm not mistaken. There are three-stage operational amplifiers, right, guys? And you just deal with it one step at a time, okay? So if we look at the given op amp, and I've taken the student attached the screenshot, so this is basically part of my solution, but I'm going to solve this with you. Um, using the V plus is equal to V minus, what is the obvious thing that stands out to you when you focus on the circuit? Is V plus given to us? Can we deduce what the value of V plus is? Can you guys see what the value of Z? Yeah, V plus is grounded, right? This is a ground. So the first thing that I figure out is that V plus is equal to zero. And guess what is the value of V minus? What is the value of V minus based on what we've just discussed? V minus better be zero as well. Why? Because for an ideal op amp, V plus is equal to V minus. So this is equal to zero, okay? And we've actually solved the circuit at this stage to be quite honest. Do you guys agree? When we know that this is zero volt and this is zero volt, we have practically achieved our solution. Because in this circuit, we have six amp entering this, correct? Is there any current going into the negative terminal? No. Current can never enter the positive or the negative terminal of an operational amplifier. Clear? Does it make sense? So this six amp is gonna travel through the six K resistor, right? So if I am writing a nodal equation at V minus, what is the current entering this point over here? Six amps, correct? And it has to be equal to the current that is leaving. So this is zero volt and this is V naught. So this becomes zero minus V naught divided by six K. Because I can see that this is a six amp current, okay, traveling. And this is a six amp current traveling over here, correct? Because the current cannot enter the negative terminal or the positive terminal. And from here, I figure out the value of my V naught is equal to minus 36, okay? Is that clear, guys? Does it make sense? Now, the question is not asking about V naught, right? The question is asking about the value of I naught. So the KCL that I'm writing at the negative terminal, is it gonna be helpful in figuring out, yeah, minus 36 kV, yeah. Is it gonna be helpful in figuring out the value of I naught, the V negative, the V minus KCL that I wrote? Not directly, but indirectly it will, right? Where should I write the next KCL? Where should I write the next KCL? If I wanna figure out the value of this I naught. V naught, right? I should write the KCL at V naught over here, correct? Does it make sense? Okay, so if I write the KCL at V naught, you guys can see I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I have this bad habit of just scribbling over the notes over and over again. And it doesn't help that this was a screenshot that it's wouldn't send me from the solution. So we know that we have one current that is traveling in. So this six amps is actually traveling in. Everybody agrees, correct? We know that I naught is entering over here. So I have two currents entering, right? So I have I naught entering the V naught right? That is this path over here, guys, right? And then I have six amp that is entering V naught, correct? Is it a fair assumption to assume that, okay, you know what, the current from, for, for the 2K is also taking this direction. So all three currents are entering. This is an important concept. 
and I'm going to hammer this out a little bit, right? So the current from 2K that is passing through this branch, why is it that I've chosen that direction? Because on one end of the 2K, right? If you look at it, I have zero volt, right? And on the other end of the 2K, I have minus 36 volt, 36 kV basically, right? Agreed? So where will the current flow from? Zero volt to minus 36 or minus 36 to zero? Zero is a higher voltage with respect to minus 36. Correct? So technically all three currents supposedly are entering. Is that making sense? Right? So if I write this equation, it will basically become zero minus minus 36 K divided by two K, right? This is volts over here and this is ohms over here. And the sum, all the currents are entering at a node and the sum has to be equal to zero. So the current that is leaving is equal to zero. And I solve this equation and I will end up with minus 24 amps. Now, this is a straightforward way of solving this problem. The issue that the student arrived at, like what, what he's trying to do, if we look at his equation, right? The student's equation, where he's trying to use voltage divider to figure things out, right? He's like minus 36 times two, I'm gonna write it as is, divided by two plus two minus eight, is equal to minus 18 volt. And then he's saying that the I naught is equal to minus 36 amps. So what is problematic about this? What do you guys think is problematic about this? Minus 36 times two divided by two plus two. What is he trying to do? He's basically treating this minus 36 volt as a voltage source. Okay. And then reverse engineering somehow to calculate for the current I naught. This equation doesn't make sense. That approach doesn't make sense. Is that clear guys? So keep things simple. KCL combined with V plus is equal to V minus and current never enters, any of the terminals of the op amp will always do the job for you. Any questions on this? Any comments? Any thoughts? Okay. So this is the output voltage, not the applied voltage, not the source voltage, right? So this is a cleaner version of my response. Six amps is flowing in I naught is going in. Current is going from the zero volt to this particular voltage, right? Current is unknown, write a KCL, okay? Don't make your life difficult. Is that clear? Now an undercurrent, you know, underlying issue with most of these questions that I received is this. As I mentioned last week, in order for you to do well in electronics, as well as power systems and linear systems, right? And to an extent, you know, some of the other sections on the exam, you have to be really good at circuit analysis. That's why last week, I emphasize circuit analysis so much. That is why you see so much content in my program for circuit analysis, okay? So if you don't have a sound understanding of circuit analysis, I can guarantee you that you're gonna struggle in electronics. I can guarantee you that you're gonna struggle in power systems, in uh, linear systems when it gets to RC, RL, transient, when they're switching on, switching off, how the circuit looks before uh, the transition and how the circuit looks after the transition, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough within the FE exam, 
and it's going to be really tough when it comes to the PE power exam. So guys, you have access to the content, lectures, quizzes, mini exams, live training, homework assignment, office hours, community. Please make use of these in order to patch up the gaps. Approach every problem in a stepwise manner. When there's disjointed thinking, right, and you're all over the place, and you are not receptive of the scenario, of the context, what is given to you, and you want to force your thinking through the, the solution, because you might have solved a similar question in a particular way, and you're sort of doing a cut, copy, paste approach, this is what happens. Okay? Does it make sense? And lastly, apply conditions for each electronic device carefully. That's the interesting thing about electronics. So the foundation is circuit analysis. On top of that, you have device specific conditions in the form of op amps, all right? In the form of uh, diodes. Within diodes, you have the PN junction ideal diode, you have the CVD model, okay? And you also have the Zener diode. Right, so there are technically three categories of diodes even over there. Then you have the BJTs. You have something else going on for and uh, PNP, something else, um, something else going for the NPN, and then um, uh, MOSFETs as well, NMOS and PMOS. So every device has its own characteristics that you need to understand and respect. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video below. You can find tons of success stories of my IP Electrical and P Power students over here. And if you want to learn more about preparation of IP Electrical and Computer Exam and the P Power Exam, then check out these playlists over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video.